Tom from Tom Cycle Recycling and today I'm here to show you how to remove and replace a leaking fork seal from a motorcycle. The bike that I'm working on today is a 1983 VF750F interceptor. There's oil around the top of the fork leg and there's some up here on the tube and for quite some time oil has been leaking past the seal whenever the bike is ridden. I'm not going to get into removing the fork from the bike because every bike is different. This particular design is very similar to what's used on many bikes from the late 70s, 80s and so on, but the actual removal procedure from the bike itself is going to vary from bike to bike because there's all kinds of other hardware involved. First, just pry this dust cap off and I'm just using a wood chisel and very carefully prying underneath, working my way around. The next thing I want to do is take this fork cap and remove it. Now you have to be very careful. There's a long spring underneath this and there's a lot of tension there. So you want to unscrew it slowly and you've got to be ready for it to want to spring out as soon as you've gotten to the last thread. So you can do this with an open end wrench. You could do it with a socket. It happens to fit it. Either way, whatever works for you. And it's just about out, okay, and you saw it spring out. So now what I'm going to do is remove this spacer and the cap and also this other unit that's part of the dampening assembly. Next thing I want to do is pour a bunch of the oil out. The spring's going to want to come, so I'm just going to put my finger at the end to keep it from flying out. Here comes the spring. You'll notice the oil is starting to come out. All right, so the bulk of the oil is out. I'm going to slide the spring out. As you can see, it's quite messy. I'm going to put this aside. And there's the fork tube and leg assembly, and you'll notice that now the uh, fork tube can slide much farther in. And this is a good time to try to get more of the oil out by doing a little pumping action here, like so. This dust seal is coming off. Just throw it away. Don't reuse it. They're not expensive. Why use a 30-year-old piece of rubber that's probably cracked and leaking? Next is snap ring removal. This is where the snap ring pliers come in handy. You've got to kind of sneak this in and get it into the two holes in the snap ring and sometimes it takes a little bit of effort. All right, I've got the snap ring pliers firmly positioned in the snap ring. You'll notice I have a piece of duct tape right here I wrapped around the tube just to protect it while I do this so I don't scratch it. You squeeze the snap ring pliers good and tight and you lift up and there's the snap ring. That's pretty much all there is to it. So. Just take the snap ring pliers out, slide this up. Now, one thing that happens with these sometimes is if they've been out, the bike has been outside for a long time, water can get in here. These can get very rusty, sometimes so bad that they actually bond to the aluminum. The rust can be a real mess and it can be difficult to get out. So it doesn't hurt to put penetrating oil in there the night before you're gonna do this to help. One thing I suggest is if this is of any questionable quality when you take it out, replace it, get a new one. They're not expensive and it's good insurance. One thing we have to do before we take the seal out is remove the Allen bolt that's here in the end. It's going into the bottom of the fork tube assembly. So I have a socketed Allen wrench. You can try to turn this by hand with a socket wrench but a lot of times the whole mechanism is going to spin and you won't be able to loosen it. The best way to get it off quickly is to use an air tool like I have. Get the socket in there good and firm. It's going to zip right out. Take no time at all. There it is. There's still going to be some oil left in here. Alright, before I actually pull the seal out, which is the last stage of disassembly, I just want to show you how it actually works. When it's all together, you've got a lower fork bush, which slides up and down inside the tube. 
There's an upper bush, which sits in a recess near the top of the tube. There's a backup ring and the seal itself, which is right here. So the way the seal will come out is very simple. While this is in the fork tube, you're going to pull up very rapidly. And as you pull up, this lower bush is the one that want to come up with it. And it acts like a slide hammer and it's going to push the seal right out with not too much effort. One thing to note is the condition of these bushes. This out, this bush on the bottom should have a nice Teflon coating on it. If it shows any wear, replace it. The upper bush is Teflon coated on the inside. And again, if it shows any appreciable wear, you want to replace it while you're at it. Note the position of the backup ring. It's got a concave side and that's pointing up. I'm going to do this on the crouching down on the ground. It's a little bit easier, get me better leverage. But I like to hold the oil container underneath it. And as I said, this is going to be like a slide hammer. And it could be messy, so be prepared. Don't wear your best Sunday pants. So pull up. There it is. Came out very easily. Usually they do. So that's the disassembly as far as the seals go. What I would recommend at this point is take your components and clean them out. I like to use a mild dishwashing liquid and hot water down the inside of the tube to clean out any sludge or buildup that's in there and wipe down all the surfaces with a decent solvent, clean everything up good, and again, inspect these bushes and decide before you go any further if you're going to replace them. All right, we're ready to start reassembling and we'll be putting a new fork seal in this shortly. Uh, in preparation, I'm gonna put some thread locker on this Allen bolts that was going into the bottom of the fork tube. Uh, one other thing I need to do is to put a little bit of oil on this lower bush here. So I'm just lubricating this so it slides in a little bit easier. And I've got to position this a certain way because this particular fork locks into a piece that's in the very bottom of the, of the leg. And it's pretty much in there now. Now what I want to do is just get this bolt started. I'm not going to torque it yet, but I want to get it going. Just so it's holding things somewhat together. And now that the Allen bolt is in the bottom finger tight, it's time to get the upper fork bush into place. So the first thing I do is put a little fork oil on it just to lubricate it. I replaced it with a new one just because I decided it was worthwhile since I was in here anyway. Next, I'm going to slip this backup ring on in the position it goes and take this piece of PVC, which is cut a little bit longer than the tube, and use it to push the bush down into place. It doesn't take much. So that's all set. Now, if you recall, I mentioned how the, how the backup ring is supposed to go. Here's another fork tube. The backup ring is supposed to be pointing concave up. And I had it down because I wanted to have a nice flat surface for the PVC. So now that's in place and we're ready to put the fork seal in. Now the fork seal has two sides to it. This is the top side. It has writing on it. This is the bottom side. So you want to make sure you install this with the writing pointing up, at least with Honda OEM fork seals, that's how it goes. And I had this in the freezer overnight because it helps it shrink a little bit, makes it that much easier to slip back into place. So I put a little bit of fork oil on the outer edge of it, and then I'm going to slip it over the fork tube. It's a snug fit, but it's not hard to get down and just kind of push it down so far. And now I'm using an extra backup ring that I had to protect the seal so that I can drive it in the rest of the way. And I believe it's in. 
it's down as far as it needs to go. So now it's time to put the snap ring back into place. So you slide that over, get your snap ring pliers, slip them in the two holes, just kind of squeeze it. I like to just get it started like that. And then I take the PVC and I drive it in the rest of the way. And you'll know when it goes in because you'll hear a distinctive click when it snaps into the groove. So let's listen. It's in. So now we can slip one of the new boots over this. Flip the boot down. Get it on there nice and snug. The uh, Allen bolt is snug at the bottom, but it hasn't been torqued yet. Normally, you want to torque this to the specified torque. And if you want the thread locker to work properly, let it dry overnight, then add your fork oil. All right, so the fork seal and the dust seal are back in. So it's time to reinstall the spring. And if you'll note, the spring has tightly wound coils on the bottom end. This is how it came out. So this is how it's gonna go back in. Now you'll note in this particular case, there's a spring, a large washer, and a spacer. Not all forks are set up this way. This one happens to be. Um, just keep note of what you have and the order in which the parts came out. So now, the trick is to get this pushed down far enough under tension to catch the first couple of threads so I can turn it in a bit. And I've got the threads caught. So now I can take my wrench and tighten this the rest of the way carefully. And there's no torque specification for this. It'll stop when it gets to the end. You'll know. And that's pretty much there. What you can do is when you get your forks back on the bike, you can put a socket on that and give it a good tightening. All right, the last thing I've got to do here before I put this back on the bike is to torque this Allen bolt to the specification. In this particular case, it's 11 to 18 foot pounds, but please consult your service manual so that you definitely do it to the correct setting for your bike. So, just tightening it. This will click once it reaches the setting I have. There it is. So that's torqued. So again, remember, I didn't put the oil in this yet. I'm gonna let this dry overnight. I want that thread lock to dry before I put the oil in. So I'll be taking this back off temporarily and I will use a precision measuring cup so that I put in the correct amount of fork oil. Consult your service manual for that as well. You wanna make sure you put enough and not too much. And then it's just a matter of putting it back on your bike. So that's how you do a fork seal on the more modern bikes. There's a different type of fork used on the 70s bikes. It doesn't have bushes in the bottom and eventually I'll have a video that shows how to get those seals in and out as well. So I hope you found this helpful and I hope that you can do this yourself now without any trouble. Best of luck with your next project. Thanks for watching.